Good people YouTube, I'm the Watch Idiot, and today I've got a watch that is very special to me for a lot of reasons, and it's the Zen uh, 104. It's special to me just because, well, first off, it, it was the first, I guess, I guess I could say my first insider watch guy watch. Oh, and uh, I got it like a few days before my sister's wedding, you know, but that's not really that important. So yeah, I loved wearing it, but eventually after a few things i just felt like it was maybe time to sell it i still wasn't uh completely sure about it but my cousin my beloved cousin he absolutely loved the watch so i figured that you know if, if he is willing to buy it you know it's going to be going to a good home so i felt better about it yeah and this exact watch is that watch that i sold uh to him and that it was mine before and now it's uh back on my wrist not permanently but anyway i'm, I'm just i'm just really happy that it's back over here and actually for a second i thought that i was gonna you know put it in my uh, state of the collection uh, video uh, last week and uh, you know just kind of as an honorable mention but instead you know i'm giving it it's in uh, its own video all the way through so uh it's uh you know much deserved so it's been about two years since i last saw it and you know pretty much immediately all the reasons why i fell in love with this watch you know it just came rushing back to me and also at the same time unfortunately you know some of the reasons why i wanted to sell it in the first place those came back to me too so yeah in this video we're going to be looking at you know what my loves and hates are of this watch or at least you know dislikes i guess and also you know finally why i ended up selling it and you know how i'm feeling about it now that i'm seeing it after two you know, about two years let's get into it Okay, so let's get into my loves of the Zen 104. Ooh. That's just so much fun that happened over there. I mean, <laughs> oh my god. That was the that was the hour beep over there. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Okay, so my <laughs> my loves are uh lost track over here. So the brutal efficiency and the proportions of the Zen 104 are absolutely incredible. And what I mean by that is the case proportions are just about perfect over here. So it's a 41 millimeter watch that really does wear quite a bit smaller than it, that uh, measurement suggests. And the thickness is just pretty much about perfect for a watch of this kind and also for the 41 millimeter uh, dimension. Also the lugs curved down just about right and also the angles of the lugs are perfect and the thickness of the lugs looking down on it are just perfect everything just works perfectly i mean there's nothing that seems to be off about it which is awesome the proportions of the hands versus the indices and the markers and the overall dial on the other hands is pretty much the best I've ever seen. And that comes down to the use of the syringe hands, which I think is the most useful handset when it comes to accurate timekeeping. That's just because the 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 fine tip of the syringe in this in this watch especially just just grazes the tops of the minute markers perfectly so you'll never have any doubts and the importance from uh, for of that for me is when I'm setting my time and I like getting it absolutely spot on i can get it absolutely perfectly without any issues whatsoever pretty much and then the hour hand is absolutely perfectly proportioned just because it's very visible it's very legible yet it is still unmistakably shorter than the minute hand so you're never going to be in this position of like ooh, you know which one's which and maybe the loom is a little bit none of that okay so now on to my next love and that's the german day wheel and all the german writing that's on the watch as well and i've mentioned this quite a few times before in my previous videos but i absolutely love bilingual day wheels honestly a an interesting bilingual day wheel for me can elevate a good watch and make it great and since this is already a great watch it just makes it you know incredible and on top of that there is a lot of German writing on the watch as well. And in the back it says, you know, like Edelstahl, Dostiker, Anti-Magnetisch, which is, I just find it super cool. You really don't see that often on other watches. You don't really see that much, you know, Japanese writing on, on a watch. And then also at the same time, you don't see very much, you know, French. I mean, I guess you see a little more French, if anything, or on the dial as well um, for, for Swiss watches. But yeah, I think that's something that, you know, more brands should do just because I find it just more interesting. And actually, <laughs> Actually, Germans, I guess, just really embrace it just because Lange, I love Lange for it just because they have, you know, all sorts of stuff on their dials on the Lange one. I mean, it has uh, Ab and Auf and then uh, uh, Doppelfederhaus, which is probably my favorite over there. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I just think it's just really fun. It taps into 
you know, what the watch inherently is and who made the watch as well. Okay, so now onto my next love, and that's the countdown bezel and the bezel feel. I am an absolute sucker for a good bezel, you know, which is you know, probably one of the main reasons why I'm a dive watch guy, but the bezel on the 104 is, is pretty incredible. It is a 60 click bi-directional countdown bezel, and I like that it is a bi-directional uh, bezel just because I can adjust it however I want. So even if I make a little mistake and I click over it, I can just click it back and I'm all good. And also the feel of the bezel is really great just because it's, you know, it's not very clicky in the same sense that a Tudor or a Seiko is, but this is still a relatively soft click, but it still feels very positive and, you know, you know when it, when, when it gets into a spot and has a good amount of resistance as well. So actually, let's, let's just listen to it. So yeah, that's awesome. Also, I love that it's a countdown bezel because it's not something that you see very often. And I just like it when watches have just something unique or something random or something just cool. Okay, so now it's my next love and it's the Loom. And honestly, this is probably has one of the cleanest, well-applied Loom indices and hands that I have, you know, of all the watches that I've owned, you know, past and present. It's just perfectly domed on every single hour marker. And also uh, when it's lit up, it's absolutely perfectly smooth. It has no splotches, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. When it glows, it glows very, very, very brightly. And also get some day glow as well. So if you just take it out for, you know, a couple seconds and you bring it back inside, it's just gonna be lit up like a torch pretty much. Okay, next thing I love is how over-engineered the watch is. And I could say that for all Zen watches. I've owned three before. <laughs> And this was my first one that I got, and then I got the 556, and then I got the U1, which is, you know, just one of the most ultimate expressions of over-engineering. And I feel like, you know, that adds to the overall feel of the watch, just knowing that it's over-engineered. And I feel like that's a very, I don't know if, it, I guess it could be, they take it as a stereotype, maybe it's a good stereotype that everything that is made in Germany is over-engineered and just like, extremely well done for that matter as well. So technically speaking, the 104 and also the 556, you know, they are pilot's watches. Pilots are in the air or on land. I mean, there's really not very much need to have very much water resistance, but both watches, obviously the 104, they are 200 meters water resistant. That's totally unnecessary, but there it is anyway. Zen, I guess, was just like, we're just gonna go ahead and double the 100 meter requirement of the ISO 6425 you know, standards for a dive watch. So, you know, there it is, and I'm glad they did it. Okay, and finally, I just love how versatile this watch is, and you know, that really comes down to the size of it, and obviously the looks of it. So the size, it is just perfectly in the middle of, it's not too big, it's not 42 plus, but it's not too small either, being it, you know, 38 millimeters and below. It's about 41 millimeters, so it can easily, you know, take both sides. It can be a very sporty watch, and also if you really need to, I think it can be dressed up as well. And, and the fully uh, polished case does help out with that, and we're gonna be talking about that a little bit later on too. And of course, since it's completely monochromatic, it's just black and white, it just uh, goes with all kinds of straps. It's a complete strap monster. I used to wear it on, you know, black or gray rubber strap just to keep it with the overall monochromatic look. But yeah, it just goes on with, with every single strap. I mean, the gray suede straps and of course gray. It really does help the dress up and down aspect of it. And for that reason, it very much makes it a go anywhere, do anything watch. And now on to the hate. And it's not really much of a hate because most of these are based on my own personal preferences. So they're really just dislikes. Okay, so I have said before that I love brush surfaces on a watch and that's actually probably one of the biggest reasons why I absolutely love my 925 because it is completely brushed from top to bottom. That's one of the things I don't like about the 104. It is completely polished. There are just so many areas of the watch that they could have brushed and they didn't pretty much brush the same way that the entire underside of the watch is brushed and it's brushed very nicely on, on, underneath it. And it bothers me just because this is a tool watch in a very very good tool watch at that so you know i feel like that paired with a fully polished case i don't know it's just a bit of a strange pairing i feel like had they just you know brushed the top of the lugs or if they just brushed the entire thing like they did on the 556 i think that just would have looked incredible and also would have kept with the tool watch aesthetic and also you still would be able to dress it up and have that go anywhere do anything versatility 
So what's it like after two years away from it? So originally I sold it just because it wasn't getting the risk time and love that it deserved just because of the things that I mentioned in the hate section, just because those were, you know, small little things and not very big deal breakers necessarily, but each one of those together just just kind of chipped away at the watch a little bit by bit. Now that I'm seeing it after such a long time, it makes me just fall in love with all the little brutal details, those perfectly proportioned hands that I was talking about before. And also probably the biggest thing, which is the German day wheel, just because this was this is the only watch that I ever had with a German day wheel and I haven't gotten one since. So uh, if anyone knows a watch with a you know German day wheel, let me know. You know, other than you know the Zen, obviously. But uh, yeah, let me know down over there. It'll be super helpful. And I really did think that I would have gotten over the negative, especially since you know the abs you know since absence makes the heart grow fonder. The polished case, I still would have preferred it to be fully brushed. And you know that's despite you know having experience you know fully polished cases and highly polished cases of Grand Seikos after um, having this watch. So yeah, that just about does it and you know what do you guys think about the 104 and you know what do you think about you know zin in general and i happen to love the 104 and zin in general so uh but i can definitely see how it's not you know ideal for most people just because it has a very specific you know type of aesthetic as always comment as much as you want i love you know, reading it and, uh, and responding to all of them. It feels like a watch meet, as I always say. Yeah, I mean, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and also hit subscribe and the notification bell uh, as well, just because if you enjoyed it, you're probably gonna enjoy the other videos that I have and the other videos I'm gonna be putting out. If you wanna get a better sense of who I am, take a look at the other stuff that I put out. And also last week, I put out a state of the collection video and you can take a look at that and then see a bit more of who I am as a you know watch collector and, uh, and you can go from over there. But um, yeah, do all of that. And until the next time, good day.